Hey everyone, today we're gonna to learn how to do a couple different image manipulations with a web tool called Firefly. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back. My name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering anything learning developments related. So Storyline, Camtasia, Axe API as well. You can also download free templates in Articulate Storyline 360 and Axe API. And if any of these topics are new to you, you can check out full courses, everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, Axe API Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 Video. Now this tool came out a little bit ago, and I'm sure there's a lot of different videos out there, but I just wanted to create my own video of how I work with Firefly and some of the cool things that Firefly can do. Firefly is by Adobe, so if you have an Adobe account, you can sign up for the beta. But if you come into Firefly, and it's just firefly.adobe.com, there's a couple different cool things that you can do, and I'm gonna quickly explore some of these. The first one is the text to image. Think of chat GPT where you just describe a couple different things with a prompt or mid journey or something like that. But this is allows you to actually create an image and it does a really good job here just by describing it. So make sure you're signed into Adobe. Now, once you're assigned into the Adobe account, you can go ahead and click on text to image here. And this will show you a couple different things. Now, these are interesting to actually take a look through because it will give you the prompt. Now, no Notice right here, a lion, comma, vector look, geometric. Right here, fuzzy, psychedelic caterpillar sitting on a mushroom, comma, and so forth. And I really want to point out the commas. You're trying to, in the different descriptions, you add a comma, and that's where you would try to describe as much, and even the lighting and other things like that. So in this case, let's go ahead and say New York City Skyline, well lit comma, futuristic. Let's go ahead and hit generate. Now, it gives me a couple different options while this is generating. It loads me four different options. But notice right here how awesome these different paintings are. If I want this to be instead of portrait, I want this to be landscape or instead of square, it will switch it over to landscape. It regenerates it, but it will generate that in landscape. But the content type is in art right now. So that's why I'm getting some results that look like specifically art. If I wanted to do photo here, this will give me a more realistic photo. And then it will still have like futuristic. And so it tries to take that into account as well. But it looks a little bit more realistic. You can see right here, these different types of images that I can download and so forth. What happens if this is close to an actual painting? I know there's some different debates on whether this is you know, correct or not or so forth, but when you download an image from Firefly, what it does is it will have a little caption here that lets them know content credentials will be included and it will have that it was made with Firefly. So people know that it was an AI generated image and so forth. That is just something to keep in mind. You can also adjust these styles here like movements. You can adjust the popular styles and it will give you different options if you wanted to create like a chaotic or palette pattern as well. If you wanted to adjust the, the temperature or the color and tone or composition. So all these different things that will give you this generated image. So that's one thing. You can explore that and test that out as well. But if you come into here, this is the generative fill, which you can do in the Photoshop beta. But I think this does a little bit better job as far as cutting out or changing a couple different things. So I have this thumbnail that I've created from a previous video. And let's say that I want to remove my background. Well, that's easily done. And I do this every with every thumbnail. But if I just click on background here, notice how good of a job this will actually do how it just removes the background. What if I wanted to add a different background? Well, I can come here and just say office background and hit generate. It cut it out extremely well. Now it's gonna give me a couple different options here, but notice it even places me at a desk. It can tell that it's kind of cut off right here and it places me at a desk with an office background. I think that's pretty awesome. These look pretty cool in my opinion. That is one thing. I'm gonna hit cancel here. 
And I'm actually going to hit clear here to take me back to where I was before. So you can completely remove the background or you can actually start removing and adjusting different things here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my shirt. Let's say that I had some type of insignia or something like that on my shirt and I wanted to remove it and I wanted to replace it with a completely different shirt. What I would do is I'd come into insert here and I just start erasing that shirt. Now, you don't have to be perfect, but what you do want to do is get rid of the shirt as much as possible because the shirts, I've noticed that if I have some type of pattern, it will use that pattern when it creates the completely new shirt. I'm going to speed this process up so you don't have to watch me do all of it, but I'm just going to paint all of this out here. Now, you can also, one thing is in the settings, you can adjust the brush size. You can also zoom in and get this exact, but you wanna get rid of all of the pattern as much as possible. All right, so that is not perfect, but I at least got all of the pattern out there. It looks a little weird right now, but this is where the cool part comes into play. All I have to do is come down here and I'm gonna describe what I want to have. Because I did it in the ad, even though it was removing, this is what I'm going to actually add. I'm not taking anything away from the image. I'm basically just painting where I want this new addition to come in. Let's just say blue shirt. I'm describing what needs to go into that section. It's going to go ahead and generate a completely new shirt for me. So I'm not sure I like the, the new arms there. So let's go ahead and just go a couple different options. This looks a little bit better. I probably in my selection went a little bit too far out. And I've noticed sometimes it does that, but other times it doesn't. So I'm not going to... I think out of all those options, I like this one probably the best. And so I probably wouldn't want to go below or beyond that. I'm going to click on more and we're going to generate a little bit more. I wasn't a huge fan of those different selections. All right. So I actually like that a lot better. I think what's throwing it off is this little dark area. I'm going to hit cancel and let's get rid of some of this other stuff here. And I'm cleaning this back up. I'm bringing this part back a little bit. All right, let's try this now. Hopefully with those problem areas kind of taken care of, this will turn out a little bit better. So I'm gonna say blue professional shirt. You may have to play around with these a little bit. I'm honestly liking this one probably the best here. I have this blue shirt, I have this other blue shirt, and so forth. Not all of them are going to be winners, but you can go ahead and completely replace different shirts inside of here or different outfits. I would probably never wear this type of shirt. I mean, not saying that it's bad, but that's just not me. But I'm thinking I like these different options here. So now I can go ahead and download this picture. Just a nice way to be able to remove something, but also completely change different aspects about the photo. And all you really had to do was paint this option. That is the generative film. There's a couple other things like text effects. You can also do generative recolor as well. And then there's a couple things like extending the image as well. These are kind of in exploration, which means that they could be coming out fairly soon. And you can see as you scroll down here, different things that are, will be coming out down the road. So text to vector, but it will create a vector image for you and probably be able to download it inside of Illustrator. Text to pattern, personalized results as well, and just generates a template. So a lot of different options. I think Firefly has already grown a lot in the matter of months that it's been out. So I'm really excited for what happens in, in the future. So I just wanted to explore a little bit of Firefly and what you can do with Firefly. If you want to check out more posts, head on over to my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can check out all previous blog posts covering anything learning development related. You can also download free templates in Articulate Storyline 360 and XAPI templates. And if any of these tools are new to you, you can check out full courses in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Also, if you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell notification so you get alerted of all new videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows my channel to grow, allows me to continue to make these videos for you to help with your learning development. Also, if you have any questions, head on over to the YouTube video and ask the question below, and I take a look at those every week.
But that's all I have for today. So thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time.